get the first science images back from the James Webb Space Telescope, and you've got a front row seat to the cosmos. I'm Michelle Thaller, your host for what can only be described as a celebration for everyone on Earth. So think about this. Life from the earliest days of the universe has been traveling to us for billions of years. Just over the last few weeks, we've captured some of that light with a telescope that sees the universe in an entirely new way. And today we share the very first data. 你现在看到的是呃，新公布韦伯望远镜第一批全彩色科学图像和光谱这个活动的一个现场。As you know, when you start something this big, you know there's always a possibility it might not work. It did work. We are so proud. And you've been on this project for a very long time, right? Yeah, I started in 1995. We had just finished measuring the Big Bang. We measured it with the Cosmic Background Explorer satellite that we built right here at Goddard, and we measured the spectrum. We measured there are hot and cold spots in the Big Bang. So we said, now we know it all, how it all got started. But then, what happened after that? So then I got a call from NASA headquarters. Would I like to work on this new telescope that's going to help answer those questions? What happened after the Big Bang? How did the galaxies grow? How did the first black hole? Today, the Webb mission is open for scientific business, and this is just the beginning. The best is yet to come. So, John, one of the things you told me about is that you really want to make sure there are some people that get thanked, people that put a huge amount of effort into this. Absolutely. The, our current project manager, Bill Oakes, uh, took the project from a time of trouble. When we were didn't exactly know how we were going to get this to work, and got it all the way to the end. Here it is. It is working, and it's because of Bill made this worldwide team. Twenty thousand people around the world were involved in making this thing all work, and Bill has been there every day, making sure that it would happen. So, another special person is Senator Barbara Mikulski. Saved our telescope, and she saved the telescope before us. She made sure after the Hubble telescope was launched and it was not in focus. That we would go up and fix it. She made sure that happened. When the Webb Telescope needed more resources, she made sure we could get that. So, Barbara, we thank you. <laughs> well, it is such an honor to be with you, Jay. I mean, it's been a pleasure to be working with you through this whole thing. Thank you so much. Congratulations, and go Webb. Thank you. <laughs> so, this broadcast, much like every part of this mission, is a partnership. On our journey to explore distant places in space, we've been joined by intrepid travelers from around the globe. We have so many extraordinary collaborators. So let's check in with our partners who will be sharing the stage with us today as we reveal Webb's five first science images. From the European Space Agency, I'm joined by Katie Haswell in Darmstadt, Germany. Katie. 现在重点来了，呃，科学家开始介绍这个呃五组，呃，最主要今天想要介绍的这个图像。I see Katie in the background there. <laughs> see the waiting. <waves. laughs> and so naturally, we're also going to be visiting the nerve center of this mission, the Space Telescope Science Institute, on the campus of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. And there we have Alex Lockwood and Carl Gordon. And there they're going to be talking to us. This is what we just talked about. 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 So here we are really going international. So I'm beginning with Bhopal, India. Do we have a signal from Bhopal? Yes. Excellent. Welcome to NASA. Hello, everybody there. Wonderful to be here. Now, this presenter is presenting the various countries that are simultaneously watching and preparing to see the first scientific images and various scientific events and events. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Oregon. So we have the feed from Portland. The Oregon. So we have the feed from Portland. They're in auditorium. I see. Okay. Okay. Next, we're going to go off to Milan, Italy. So afternoon in Italy. Ah, 就连意大利目前也有这个活动的现场。I guess we have a screen from Italy. And next, we're going to go to Rutland, Vermont. So is this Vermont? Hello, Vermont. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Thank you for being part of this today. Vermont, Vermont. So going even a little bit further afield, we have Netanya, Israel. Hello. 还有以色列也有呃科学家在同步的收看。Okay, just one more for now. Uh, I see people like giving me hugs. Okay, we also have Vancouver, Canada. 
。那在温哥华，呃，也就是这个加拿大这边的一个现场。今年可以说是全世界这个天文学最主要的一个盛会，也是几十年来这个天文观测最重要的一个事件。So it's incredibly important to me personally, and also to all of us at NASA, that the universe belongs to everyone, and we are thrilled to share this day with fans everywhere around the world. We'll say hello to some more later in our broadcast. So now it's time to start the main event. What you'll see over the next hour will be a collection of images newly processed by the Webb Science Team. Only a tiny handful of experts have seen the images so far, and I can tell you that we have been so excited to unwrap them for everyone. We will be releasing each image in turn in real time. As soon as you see it on this broadcast, it will be available for download on the internet. On the screen below, you can see a timeline showing where we are in the show and what's coming up next. And by the end of all five images will be available to everyone. So hopefully you can tell I'm excited. Okay, so let's do this. The first part is the so-called "sentinel effect." This is a very special picture. 这个全世界，特别是这个参与这一次工作的天文学者，对韦伯望远镜所交出的第一份成绩单可以说是非常满意，而且相当兴奋。我们都可以看到他们的这个一种这种感到自豪的这个表情都写在脸上。他们认为这已经突破了既有的天文科学基础。我们来听进一步的解说。To share our first image with President Biden and Vice President Harris, and it it was really fun. Oh my gosh, um, we're、uh, they really geeked out. We had a closed door session where we got to walk through all the images. 美国行政部门的负责人包括白宫、呃、总统、副总统、呃呃、非常少数的一些呃领袖呃曾经看过这样的，就在昨天看过这样的一个图像啊。All right, here we go. Ah,、uh, okay. <laughs> So the first image is a deep field, and it's also a deep field with a cluster. So why don't we walk through this just a little bit? So if we come up and look at this image, first of all, it's really gorgeous,、yeah. and it's teeming with galaxies. And that's something that has been true for every image we've gotten with Webb. We can't take blank sky everywhere we look. There's galaxies everywhere. And so, you know, this gal, this this image, as we're looking at it, what we're seeing is not just all the galaxies, but there's a cluster here. And so the cluster are all these white, kind of ethereal galaxies. We're seeing them as they looked back in time, right? The speed of light is only so fast, and so as we're seeing distant galaxies out in space, we're seeing them as they looked billions of years ago. So these cluster galaxies, the white ones, we're seeing as they looked about the time the sun and the earth formed. And then behind the cluster, we have、uh, the cluster. The 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 gravity of the cluster is distorting and warping our view of what's behind. And so there are these galaxies that look stretched and pulled, kind of like like they've been magnified because they've been magnified by the gravity of the cluster, just like Einstein said they would. And you know, it's really there's so much detail here. We're seeing these galaxies in a way that we've never been able to see before. There's just a sharpness and a clarity we've never had. And so we can look at if we zoom in on this image, and I encourage you as you grab this image at home, like zoom in. It you can. You know, really zoom in and play around. There are galaxies here in which you're seeing individual clusters of stars forming, popping up, just like popcorn.、Uh, and then we also see in the background of this galax of this image, kind of littered like jewels all over the back of the image are these faint red galaxies. Now that was what we built the telescope to do. 
这可以说是今天这个揭露这个 DP 图像的重头戏啊！呃，我刚看了一下这个这个目标的这个星系团啊，呃，非常非常遥远，大概距离地球大约四十六亿光年啊。呃，其实这个区域和这一批图像，其实哈勃望远镜在之前也曾经传回过，不过跟今天相比，实际上是并没有这么清楚啊。那比较特别的是，他们是利用这个呃这个星系团是当做宇宙的一个放大镜哦，呃，借着一个扭曲的图像。来窥探这后面星系背后比较遥远又暗淡的一些星系的图像，把它凸显出来，就像戴了一副眼镜一下。所以这个是一个非常一个特别的一个一个图像。我们继续来听解说。The amazing thing about Web is the speed at which we can churn out discoveries. So everything that you're going to see here in this broadcast. Is a week, and we're going to be doing discoveries like this every week. That is absolutely incredible, James. So thank you so much for joining us. I, it's been an honor to be working with you. Congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you. It's so wonderful <laughs> to see it pay off. So thank you, and I'll see you later on today. I hope so. Yes. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Right. So from distant galaxies, we now turn our eye to something a bit closer. It's a planet, but not one in our solar system. Remember that Earth and its sibling planets aren't the only show in the universe. When scientists and engineers started developing JWST, the search for exoplanets wasn't even part of the plan. That's changed. Exploring exoplanets is now a major component of the mission, and the subject of our second big reveal of the day. I'm going to send it now to our friends Natalie Willette and Sarah Gallagher at the Canadian Space Agency in Montreal. So again, bonjour. 现在主持人正在介绍加拿大的团队哦。事实上，这个韦伯太空望远镜主要是观测这个红外线光谱，所以它非常需要这个很冷又黑暗的一个观测环境，才能收到最好的效果。我们来看这个加拿大这一边的一些介绍、啊。另外，科学家希望借着这个韦伯望远镜，可以捕捉到宇宙大爆炸之后最初一批星体的诞生了、啊，就是刚才我们看到一个生长效应，他们希望看的。很远很远，就是最早期星体诞生的呃一些这个图像啊，甚至刚刚他们就说，呃，有一些新生成的一些星星啊，记得这些画面都可以看到。他们希望从而了解早期星系的一个模样、星体与生命的起源和演化。我们来听进一步的解说。And it is this hot, gaseous, giant, puffy planet that it is about a thousand light years away. So that's why today is really so exciting. Sorry, teasing that. What I'm going to do for some of this. Absolutely. So talk us through what this discovery is and and why this is so significant.、Mm -hmm. Well, this、uh, reveal that you're going to see is going to show the first spectrum of. An exoplanet, as taken from the Webb telescope, and this is exciting because it covers infrared wavelengths of light that we have not had access to before.、Mm -hmm. So we've been able to use other telescopes to explore exoplanet atmospheres in the infrared, but not to this level of detail. And this is just one sliver of data that Webb is providing us using the nearest instrument specifically. And there's something about、um, infrared that is actually particularly good for for the spectrum. So in this in this case, what we're doing is we're actually going to take the light and break it up into a rainbow and look very very carefully at how much color is coming in each in, in each part of the the spectrum. So I believe we have that image. If we can put that up. Okay. Yes, I I believe we're revealing the spectrum right here. <laughs> so we now have our spectrum, and this is exactly what you're seeing as you just described with spectroscopy. What we did was we observed a transit of an exoplanet. We observed the planet as it passed in front of the star. Now, mind you, this is not a direct image. This is an indirect image. So we've seen the effect of what happens when the planet and its atmosphere passes in front of the star. The starlight filters through the atmosphere, and then you can break that down into wavelengths of light, and you get a bunch of what looks like bumps and wiggles to some people, but it's actually full of information content. So you're actually seeing bumps and wiggles that indicate the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. 
So we have these special materials. Is there anything mm -hmm. you'd like to, to highlight particularly? Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, several features marked here. So I call them features. They're these, what I just referred to as bumps and wiggles. But what you're seeing here is the telltale signature, the chemical fingerprint of water vapor in these atmospheres, in the, in the atmosphere of this specific exoplanet. And the other thing you can tell actually is that there's evidence of clouds and hazes because the water features are not quite as large as we predicted. So we can take that and infer that there are presence of clouds and hazes. Right. Now, one thing that we really want to make sure people understand is with this particular planet, this is a hot swirl. It's actually closer to its star than Mercury is to our sun. Mm -hmm. And so we're not looking at liquid water here. So we're really looking mm -hmm. instead at, at, at sort of steam, water vapor. Yes, this is a, an exoplanet. It's about the size of Jupiter, about half the mass of Jupiter. It orbits around a sun-like star, but it does it every about three and a half days. So it's extremely hot, extremely close in, nothing like our solar system planets. But that's okay, because what we're seeing is, again, the first exoplanet data from Webb, and this is just the beginning. We're going to start pushing down to further, smaller planets and being able to take measurements just like this with the NEARS instrument that um, was built by the Canadian Space Agency. But also, there's other three, three other science instruments that will add to our knowledge in the infrared as well as direct imaging uh, modes along with the transit method. So there's a lot more to come. And I guess one thing we should mention is not only are we going to be looking at planets that are more like the Earth in the future, but we'll also be looking at planets in our own solar system. Absolutely, yes. We're going to have um, exciting data from planets in our solar system from Mars uh, outward as well as asteroids and comets. So stay tuned for a lot more to come. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for telling us about the spectrum and I'll be seeing you later on today. 现在是介绍这个第二组星云，接着要介绍第三批的图像。But first, let's take a look back at the journey that brought us to this moment. Celebrations like this one are only possible with years of hard work from a cast of thousands. When a new mission is being built, even the most enthusiastic space fans only get to see dramatic moments in its life cycle, the news and images that come out in updates and press releases. But that doesn't really give you the sense of the huge effort that goes on behind the scenes every day. The plans, schedules, and organization to keep everything moving forward really happens, for the most part, out of people's gaze. Webb started as an idea that took root at NASA Goddard. It grew first into planning teams, research projects, schematics, requirements. Then it began the long journey to become real with the development of new technologies, cutting-edge engineering, and finally fabrication, putting it all together. Let's take a brief look back at the visionary journey to how we all got here today. So today was the final close out of the purge. Okay guys, I can hear Rupa, but the pretty emotional moment to be in there and actually, you know, closing it up for the very last time, right? You know you're the last one to touch this. And so that was the final operation. And once that fitting is closed out, um, there's no more touching of the vehicle. We're ready for launch. Weibo Humanity has unlimited questions about our universe. Engineering a way to investigate them requires enormous creativity. Webb has been a trade-off between engineering performance, the, what the astronomers want, risk, Shine 重头戏观察的重点是 
，我们说是一个叫做 WASP 9 6 B 的一个光谱图像，它并不是真的一个影像，它是一个光谱的分析啊、哦。啊、呃，主要是距离这个大概是这个一千一百五十光年距离的一颗巨行星，它的一个光谱图像啊、哦。这颗巨行星它的质量大约是木星的一半，它的发现是在二零一四年左右宣布。我们来看第三个图像，现在。Through all of the major deployments, focusing, aligning the telescope, and calibrating those four amazing science instruments, it was all done in this building. And from here on out, we'll have daily communications with the telescope, including sending commands and downloading data with the help of the Deep Space Network. In addition to mission operations, we are also the home of science operations. Well, what does that mean? Every year, we solicit proposals from astronomers across the country, for and the world. For what they would like to look at with Webb, then we hold a rigorous selection process. 目前是工作团队正在介绍他们的一些监管数据的一些呃参与的工作啊、呃，接下来要公布这个第三组，也是相当重要的一组这个图像。And we knew that today was going to be so exciting with the first images, so we've actually been preparing for years. Here is Klaus Pentapaden, project scientist for Webb and the technical lead for the first images, yeah, it's been a year to tell you process. about the process of the past few years of selecting the targets. I look back, and my first the email targets. related to the uh, the first images was back from 2016. Uh, so back then, uh, a committee was created, and this committee was charged with coming up with a long list of targets for the first images. And the reason for that is that the observatory can't see the entire sky at any given time, and this is because you want to avoid the mirror seeing direct sunlight. This is a very special image, quite a long list. It can be said to be a very famous image. We can only select only a handful. We can see the long lens in the L2, which is the location of the nearest L2 point. 啊，飞行的一个轨迹，它必须躲在这个地球的背面啊，再加上这个隔热罩，让这个望远镜的温度降到很低，所以才能够收到比较好的效果。And we knew that selecting the images was just the beginning. That we would need a trained eye to take these exquisite data and pull out the beauty and the science potential. So here is Jody Pasquale and Elisa Pagan to tell you about how they processed these beautiful images. We're basically translating light that we can't see into light that we can see by applying、uh, color like red, green, and blue to the different filters that we have from Web. And the reason we want to color the images is because there's actually more that you can get, more information that you can get from the image if you see it in color. So it's a matter of picking and choosing filters and colors that enhance the details and the structure in the image itself. The shortest wavelengths of infrared light and assign those blue colors. And then move our way down to green and red as we go to longer and longer wavelengths. And then we additively combine those together to get our full color image. But there is a lot of aesthetics that are involved in this. Painstakingly going through and cleaning these images up、uh, with a, an attention to detail, the level of detail, like at the pixel level in every image. So when I'm working on. The astronomical data—it is this sort of marriage between art and science. When you're choosing colors for the filters, you really are trying to show the different details. 
我想，呃，大家都知道，这次韦伯望远镜它是一个这个呃红外线的一个呃，主要以红外线这个数据收集的一个望远镜，所以它收集出来的其实是一些数据哦，是经过地面上科学家经过比对，然后套用。最后才能够呈现今天我们看到的景象。我们来看这个接下来第三批图像的一个介绍。So we have a team of like 30 people who are producing these images, and we feel incredibly privileged to be the ones who are the first to see these science-like images. When when we saw the first data come down of real targets, people were speechless and there were emotions because we immediately we could see how amazing this observatory will be, the detail, the sharpness, the depth. And when we saw the first color images, we knew that we had a winner. And now we are ready to see Webb's. First image of a star dying, a planetary nebula called the Southern Ring. Let's do it. Oof. Wow, wow! This this near infrared image is wow. The detail. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, here we are. We have a near infrared image on our left, or on maybe your right, <laughs> and here on the right we have a near infrared image.、Um, and so, I'm here with Carl, our, our astronomer、uh, specialist. Can you tell us what we're looking at in these images? So this is a planetary nebula. It's caused by a dying star that has dispelled a large fraction of its mass over in successive waves. Okay. So we actually see those waves in these images. Yes.、Um, Wow! Wow! And so there's a lot of structure. Can you tell us a little more detail about what we're looking? Maybe start with this one on the left. Yeah. So in the in the near cam image, you see this kind of bubbly,、uh, you know, almost foamy appearance throughout the whole nebula with some very structured、uh, shells. But the and this foaminess is showing up in orange mainly, and this is this is due to the molecular hydrogen that's newly formed in the expansion,、uh, just lighting up the gas and dust of this nebula. And then, as we move inward, you see this kind of very、uh, blue haze in the inner region, and this is actually due to very hot ionized gas that emits well in the blue,、um, that's heated by the core, the leftover very hot core of this star. And what about these like rays that I'm seeing in this image? Right. There, so there's also rays in the outer regions that you can kind of see, and these are holes in the inner nebula that are actually allowing the the central star's light to come out and kind of light it up like、uh, you know patchy clouds with the sun shining through. Wow! Oh, yeah, that's what it looks like. That's so cool.、Um, so you're actually a mid infrared astronomer, which is different than near infrared. And so, what can you tell us about the details in this mid infrared image? So this is. It looks quite different in color,、um, partly because we're, we're seeing different kinds of physics going on here. So we're actually seeing in the blue. You see a lot of blue. The blue is actually due to hydrocarbon grains that are emitting very strongly in the blue for Miri. And they show the very similar structures to what we see in orange near cam, because the the hydrocarbon, the molecular hydrocarbon, actually forms on the surface of dust grains. And so again, as we move inward, we we see that the, the inner region is again hot ionized gas, but now it glows red because that's where it emits longest for the strongest for Miri wavelengths. Okay. And then as we go into the center, we see kind of the surprise for us, which is we knew this was a binary star, but we ba- we. Effectively, didn't really see much of the of the the actual star that produced the nebula, but now in Miri, this star glows red because it has dust around it. So in Miri, we got to see both stars very clearly. Yeah, yeah, you can't see it in the first image really, but there's two stars there. So that's a fun surprise,、um, and I think that there's another little Easter egg you want to tell us about. Yeah, so this was、uh, the Easter egg is this kind of、uh, narrow filament up in the. Up in the top, that's radially aligned. You can kind of see it very clearly in the Miri image. It shows up as this blue, blue structure, and it points very much to the central sources. So I thought, oh, this must just be a density enhancement in the outer nebula. I thought that very, very strongly. But other people on the team were like, no, it's a background edge on galaxies. Well, I made a bet that said, no, it's part of the nebula. By the way, I lost the bet because then we looked more carefully at both the Near Cam and Miri images, and it's very clearly. 
an edge on galaxy with a dust lane and a bulge. So I lost the bet. Well, you lost the bet, but you got these gorgeous images. So I think it's a win for everybody. Oh, Anything else you'd like to say today? I can't wait to see where we go from here. Oh, neither can I. All right. Thanks so much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Alex and Carl. And I have to say that image is absolutely spectacular. So as you know, people from all over the world are going to be joining in our debate on excitement as we release for Webb's first science images. We've been checking in with our colleagues in Europe and Canada throughout the program, but we also want to take a moment to include the people at the oh-so-many viewing parties scattered around the world like stars in the night sky. So let's check in with some of them now. First, we go all the way to Perth, Australia. Do we have a signal from Perth? I guess nothing from Perth right now. Uh, maybe we have some of our other feeds. We're going to check in with them right now. Do we have Winnipeg, Canada? Oh, there it is. There's Australia. There's Perth. Hey, waving to Perth, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, next we're going to Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Canada. Hello, Winnipeg. At a planetarium. Everybody's enjoying the show, I hope. OK, Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> Everybody's watching on the, uh, yep, there we go, Dayton, Ohio. Hello, everybody, Dayton. Nice to have you here with us. There we go, yes. Hey, hey, Dayton. Hey, <laughs> they're jumping up and down. <laughs> Hi. Okay, all the way, Bangalore, India. India, Bangalore. Hello, hello, hello to Bangalore, India. Hey. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. Hey. <laughs> Okay, so I, I, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the images we're releasing. Okay, of course, NASA's family extends all over the country. The team at JPL in Pasadena, California, they're on site to celebrate with us. So hello, JPL, some of my favorite people in the world. Hey, hello. And I think the last place we're going to right now is Northrop Grumman, one of our major contractors. Hello, Northrop Grumman. Oh, hey, all right. <laughs> Yay. Nice to see you, Northrop Grumman. All right, now there's also a big watch party right here on the NASA Goddard campus. Many of these people have worked on the mission itself, and we also have top NASA leadership and representatives from our government. So hello, <laughs> hello watch party at Goddard, yay. Okay, wonderful. So I mean, at NASA, we are so fortunate to have all of these friends and colleagues around the globe. A major partner in the Webb mission is the European Space Agency. ESA contributions have been essential to so many aspects of this project, including Webb's spectacular launch on the Ariane 5 rocket last December. I'm very pleased to turn over the show for a few minutes to Katie Haswell. She's joining me from the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. Hello, Katie. Good afternoon. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to Germany. We're at the European hey, Space Agency. Place. I'm still getting all kinds of IFD uh, from lots of center. people. It's where the teams effectively fly the satellites in a little bit uh, of a cross between air traffic controllers and uh, pilots. We have lots of different control rooms here. This is the main control room, and as you can see today, it's not in use, so we've been lucky enough to uh, move in here for today. I have two very special um, experts with me, both scientists from the European Space Agency. Uh, uh, Giovanna Giardino is a uh, near-spec scientist. Giovanna okay. is, uh, has been working on that for, for many years and lots to tell us about that. And Mark McCorcoran is a special advisor for space, for science and exploration. These two guys have been working on the Webb Space Telescope for a long time. So we're very grateful to have you with us. Thanks, folks. Um, because we've come here today uh, because these guys were the first ones uh, to pick up the signal uh, during the uh, web launch, when web first launched. They run a system called S-Track, which is NASA's deep space uh, tracking system, and they were listening out when web called home. And uh, the controllers here have been looking after a whole very impressive list of missions since uh, 1968. 
ESA has played a very, very important role during the web, uh, for the Webb Space Telescope. They provided the launch on board the awesome Ariane 5 launch vehicle from the Guiana Space Center. The atmosphere in the Mission Control Center was uh, electric, I can tell you I was there. Um, they've also provided people. We have 15 ESA scientists working at uh, Space Telescope in Baltimore, and also they have provided the um, uh, infrared uh, spectrograph, the near-infrared spectrograph, and also half of the MIRI instrument, which is the mid-infrared instrument. Let's take a look at those now. Webb's four scientific instruments include NearSpec, the near-infrared spectrograph led by ESA. NearSpec splits near-infrared light from astronomical objects into its components. Like a barcode, this will help scientists understand the physics of the objects they're observing, from their temperature to atomic makeup. NearSpec can observe parts of an object or the sky using an image slicer and an array of microscopic shutters. Webb's integrated science instrument module, located behind the main mirror, also contains MIRI, a mid-infrared camera and spectrograph. Seen here during testing, MIRI has been developed by a partnership between Europe and the US. MIRI detects mid-infrared light from planets, stars and galaxies. It can analyse molecules to help us deduce what astronomical objects are made of and peer into clouds of gas and dust where stars and planets are born. Together, these instruments will help Webb detect and analyse light from the very dawn of time, revealing the universe as never before. So, so let's get ready to reveal our image. And remember that one of Webb's jobs is to find out about galaxies, more about the galaxies, but also to help us to understand how they change. And this image is going to be very, very useful for that. Let's reveal it now. There it is. It's called Stefan's Quintet. And it's wondrous. Giovanna, what are we looking at? Yes, like you said, quintet. So we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are uh, this giant structure that, as we've seen, we see everywhere around us in the universe. They contain from million to 100 billions of stars. And in fact, we live in one of them, the Milky Way. And here we see uh, five of them. This is a, a closer um, a galaxy uh, in the foreground. And these four are uh, at a distance of about uh, 300,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
So we have another image, don't we, that we can exactly. look at? Exactly. So, so, so if we strip away the near-infrared view there of the stars, predominantly now in the mid-infrared with MIRI alone, we see mostly gas and dust. So we've seen the same galaxies again, the two merging. And then we also see something very interesting up at the top here, because this top galaxy has something new and bright in the middle of it. And Giovanna, tell us what that is. Yeah, that's uh, an active black hole. We cannot see the black hole itself. But we see the material swirling around, being swallowed by this sort of cosmic monsters. And it gets, uh, this gas gets heated to extremely high temperature as it falls onto the black hole. And it becomes very bright. In fact, this is our shine of the galaxy. Here we see uh, luminosity that are 40 billion times the luminosity of our sun. It's really, really bright. And uh, with NIRSPEC, we can zoom into this area. And, and we have this technology that allows us to take uh, uh, thousands of images at different wavelength channels. Uh, so see the, uh, the, the, this distribution of the gas, what's going on in the gas uh, in different regions uh, of, the, of this core area. And understand uh, the composition of the gas, the velocities, um, the temperature. So that's imp very important to understand the physics. So it's, it's, it's giving us so much information. It just shows the power of this telescope. Mark, this is just the beginning though, isn't it? I think that's a very important takeaway from today. You know, we, these are like pictures just taken over a period of five days. And every five days, we're getting more data, which will contribute more in that, in that direction. It's a culmination of decades of work, but it's just the beginning of decades. And you know what we've seen today with these images is essentially that we're ready. 其实韦伯传回来的是这个一组又一组的数据啊。这个科学家，特别是我们看到欧洲太空中所的科学家，在收到这些数据之后，他必须要经过这个电脑图像的整理，然后一些转换，最后才能够呈现这样的一个图像。现在是准备介绍第五组的一个图像。Thanks, Katie. It is so great to have you and your colleagues with us on this historic day. So before we get to the fifth and final image reveal of the day, it cannot be said enough that an achievement like the James Webb Space Telescope is something bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than any organization, any country. This truly takes a planet. Webb belongs to all of us. And starting today, the discoveries start and they're not going to stop. This is just the beginning. We've said several times throughout the broadcast that the Webb mission is about people. And during the construction of the Great Telescope, people started to see themselves in it, literally. Day after day, people visited the observation window at NASA Goddard. And looking through the glass, they snapped selfies of themselves reflected in the gigantic golden mirror. These photos are actual reflections of the enormous human investment and the emotional commitment that brought this mission to life. And now, years later, that mission is finally collecting light from the earliest days of the universe, all the way to worlds in our own solar system. It's the same mirror that reflected the many faces who see themselves as part of the journey to understand our shared origins. Let's stop for a moment and appreciate the people behind Webb. Okay, it's time now for the last image to be revealed. Here we go. So Amber Strong is Webb's deputy project scientist. She's here with me today to share the final big reveal of the day. So Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? So great, so exciting. What a what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb Space Telescope has taken us all over the universe today. So let's do a quick review of where we've been so far. So Jane Rigby got us rolling today with an extraordinary new deep field image, showing us one of the farthest views of the universe ever. Yeah, this image really does demonstrate that JWST can do exactly what we've designed it to do. Yes. And uh, the Canadian Space Agency then took us to the massive planet WASP-96b, where the team has detected evidence of atmospheric water. And here again, we're seeing the incredible efficiency of this observatory. We're able to do these kind of measurements in a fraction of the time that we are, were able to before. And then we zipped up the road from NASA Goddard to the Space Telescope Science Institute, where Alex and Carl showed us the exquisite Southern Ring Nebula, a mixing bowl of stellar matter around a pair of dying stars. Yeah, and I'm just blown away by the level of detail we can see, like in the outer part of, of this nebula. It's incredible. Wow. Okay. 
After that, it was off to Germany, where the European Space Agency wowed us with pictures of galaxies interacting and mixing together. Right, and this image, again, it's just, it's incredible because it's showing us one of these fundamental processes of the universe, how galaxies merge together. And we're able to learn about these processes in a brand new way. So the web team has a lot to cheer about right now. So across the campus, there's this big watch party, and we can feel the excitement all the way from over here. So let's join that celebration now. We're back with senior project scientist John Mather, along with the head of NASA science mission director, Thomas Zerbukin. Hello. So, uh, John, we looked around the world and we're the only ones with a cheerleading <laughs> crew like over there. This is amazing. Uh, look, uh, you've been with this mission for decades. Uh, how do you feel today? I am so thrilled and so relieved. This was so hard and we took, it took so long. Um, it's just impossible to convey how hard it really was. That uh, We risked so much to say we're going to go do this and it's so near impossible, but we did it. Yeah, there are thousands, way, thousands of ways this can go wrong. Yes. Uh, many of them, uh, you know, we worried about and, and frankly feared even after launch. I have to tell you, I was really, really nervous. And, you know, it's almost like athletics for me. You always get to know the team when they're on the field. And on the field, they were right after this launch, and they were perfect. They absolutely were. And I really wasn't worried, but maybe I should have been. Yeah, that's that's difference between the two of us. I always worry. I always tell everybody I'm paid to worry, uh, frankly, uh, and, and and that's good. Uh, what we want to do, though, is you know just really thank the team again. You know, of course, we heard uh, Bill and Scott and uh, Greg talking about the team that is there. I think what's also important is to recognize that Bernie is sitting there. It was the first uh, manager. I was sitting there. Could you stand up? And. Uh, and I want to mention that Phil Sablehouse, who is a manager uh, also during a time, is no longer with us, but uh, his heart is with us today. Yeah. I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, John, uh, after each one of these milestones, I called a lot of people. I called Bernie, for example, and I called uh, people who had my job and people who are administrators, because there's many of them. And I just wonder how you feel about the team, just to uh, give you the word here. I am just so thrilled that we had a privilege to assemble such a brilliant team. Uh, we drew from the best of the best, and here we are. So my extreme deep thanks go to all the people who built that team, not only to Bernie, who started us and helped us build up all the technology, to Phil, who made sure we would have a plan, and then when we didn't have quite enough money, to Bill, who pulled it all together and made it get all the way to the end, I am so thrilled that we had so much talent to draw on. And here we are, we have the support of the country and the world to take on this immense challenge. You know what I'm most excited about? There's tens of thousands of scientists, and frankly, some of them just got born, or not even born, yeah. uh, who, are, who are benefiting from this amazing telescope, because it will be with us for decades. Can it will be. That? We have, it took us about 25 years to get here, since 1995, and we have at least 25 to go. I hope. So look, uh, we are in a sense of, uh, of these images, the art that is out there in the sky revealed for the first time. We're thinking of the team and we're thanking them. John, thanks to you, thanks to all of you, and back to Michelle. Thank you so much, Thomas. And this entire collection continues to just absolutely astound.我们刚刚看到的是这个美国太空中学的这个助理署长，他在介绍这个领导的科学家以及他们中间所经历的一些工作。现在是最重要、重重要的一批图像啊。Wow, look at that. So, Amber, can you can you tell us a bit about what we're seeing here? Of course. 其实这个星云非常有名哦，就是呃，大家如果熟悉，它叫船底座星云哦。可以说是从地球看起来是在天空中最大最亮的一个星云之一哦，它距离地球大概是七千六百光年左右。经过科学成像整理，我们可以看到这个色彩非常的鲜艳跟丰富啊。
Um, there's just there's a lot going on. To call out a few specifics, first of all, in general, the Carina Nebula is a nearby star forming region within our own Milky Way galaxy, about 7,600 light years away. Um, and in this view, we see some great hundreds of new stars that we've never seen before. We see examples of bubbles. Uh, 对地球的观测来说，川底座星云是天空中最大、最亮的星云之一。Some galaxies sort of lurking in the background up here. We see examples of structures that, honestly, we don't even know what they are. Like, what's going on here? There's just there's the data is just so rich. And there's something really special about the infrared. Infrared can actually see deeper into these star-forming regions. Absolutely, that's one of the great things about infrared is it really does reveal. Uh, what's going on here in a, in a really cosmic sense. And in general, what's happening in sort of this overall landscape is we have these gigantic, hot, young stars up here to the top of this rim, and the radiation and stellar winds from those stars is sort of pushing down and running into all of this. This is gas and dust, and of course we know that gas and dust is great raw material for newborn stars and baby planets. 我们听到这个呃相关的工作人员在介绍，这一个星云是由这个尘埃和气体所组成的一个巨大星云、哦。如果呃进一步了解，你可以发现这个船底座星云拥有许多比太阳大好多倍的一个大质量的一个恒星啊、哦。Not unlike our sun. 一般看起来，它有点像是一个巨大的一个山脉，或是一个呃一个山系在空中哦，非常遥远，给人家有非常多的一个神秘感哦。Stuff that we see here, we humans really are connected to the universe. We're made of the same stuff in this beautiful landscape. And actually, the Carina Nebula was one of my favorite images from Hubble. So Hubble looked at this as well, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The Hubble image of this is also spectacular. We saw it in a, a different kind of light when when Hubble uh, took an image of this of this uh, particular nebula. And then you can see amazing things with Hubble. But when we zoom in to this new image, we're able to see so much more detail. And of course, all of us, you know, I grew up <laughs> on Hubble. And all of us uh, love Hubble. And 其实这一批这个船底座星云的图像啊，也是、呃、当时的哈勃望远镜让人家、呃、非常惊艳。它拍下来有的地方的形状，有点像云雾啊、山峰，它的山峰高度啊，有的是这个好多啊、呃，大概三光年的一个高度这个距离啊。And we have all the way from the distant galaxies to the birth of stars. This is where we all began. This was the whole point of the James Webb Space Telescope to figure out our origins from the very, very early days of the universe to star and planet formation very nearby. So right now, I'm very honored to have our last special guest. Uh, this is the administrator of NASA, Bill Nelson. An honor to be with you, sir. Hey, what a pleasure! What what a banner day! Uh, it's clear that Webb represents. The best of NASA. It maintains our ability to propel us forward for science, for risk taking, for inspiration. And we don't want to ever stop exploring the heavens nor stop daring to take another step forward for humanity. In the words of the famous Carl Sagan, somewhere. Something incredible is waiting to be known. I think those words are becoming reality. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. An honor to have you here. Thank you very much. Wow. So, this is a celebration for all humanity. If you've ever looked up at the night sky. 已经接进入最后结语阶段。刚刚听到的是美国太空总署的署长，也就是宇航局的局长啊，这个 Bill Nelson。呃，他本身是这个担任过太空人，也担任过州众议员以及州参议员，呃，甚至是呃，在这个政业长期服务，还当过联邦的众议员啊，呃，他是这个。